Are you looking for some Apple news? I got some. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel. So if you've watched my channel before, you know I throw in these videos every once in a while where I like to go through some Apple, what's in the news from Apple, right? It's either Apple products or Apple services or Apple things to watch out for. Just things that I find in the news and I like to go through maybe eight or nine different stories with you. So sit back and relax, grab some popcorn like I always say, and let's go through these different stories. I hope you guys like this kind of content. Let's get into it. All right, so for the first news story, we're gonna talk about the brand new 15 inch MacBook Air may be coming out in April, that's what they're saying. So this guy, I forget his name, his name's Ross Young, he's saying, he's basically the one saying this. These are five different things that he's identified on this new 15 inch MacBook Air, even though it might be called just the MacBook, we don't know yet. But number one is basically the display. It's gonna be about 15.5 inches, so quite a bit bigger than 15. It's gonna be the biggest MacBook Air display yet. And it's not gonna be OLED. You have to wait until 2024 for that. He's saying it's gonna be LCD, so it's gonna be a 15.5 inch LCD screen for all it's worth. All right, and then basically for this system, they're also saying that it's gonna come with the M2 chip and maybe not even the M2 Pro. They're thinking just the M2 chip. We'll have to see if it does come with the Pro or not. And a lot of people are thinking maybe it would be the M3, but it's coming out next, they think next month, so there's no way it's gonna be that. It's gonna be the M2 is what everybody's thinking. And another thing about this new MacBook Air is gonna be basically the battery life. Because the case and the, and the screen and everything's a little bit bigger, this is gonna be the best battery life of any MacBook they said ever. It's gonna be around 20 hours, take it or leave it, if you believe that or not. I actually have a MacBook Air right here. It says 17, 16 hours. I get about 10 for all it's worth. But uh, they're gonna claim 20 hours on this, so for all it's worth, that'll be great if it actually happens. And then the last two things he noted, it's gonna come with Wi-Fi 6E, so that's basically gonna put you at the six gigahertz spectrum. It's gonna give you basically more stable Wi-Fi and, and a better experience overall. That's actually shipping on some of the Apple's newer products, so that's not a big, big issue at all. And then basically 5.3 uh, on Bluetooth, so Bluetooth 5.3. That'll wrap it up. Those are some things he noted that are coming out. So if you're kind of narrowing down, should you wait for this or not? Those things are may or may not help you kind of decide on that, but just wanted to share it. All right, for story number two, this is a price alert. So now I'm not talking about that new MacBook Air, but the one that came out in 2022 with the M2 chip, the 13.6 inch, that's basically gonna, it's on a price alert. It's $12.99 on Amazon right now, but that's for the 512 gigabyte version. So it's 200 bucks off. Now I'll have a link to it in the description, but let's say you watch this in a week or so and the price isn't there. You go in there and like, why did the price change? Well, you can still get some use out of this. Whenever this happens, now you know where that low price is and you wanna wait for that price to come back. So don't buy it any more expensive. Wait for that to drop back down if you don't see it. But right now, today, I just looked, it's available for $12.99 with that added you know, extra storage on there, 200 bucks off, that's a pretty good deal. All right, so story number three, this is coming from Mac Rumors forums. There's a person that actually, they, they figured, hey, the Mac Mini's really small, the Mac Studio is fairly big, so they designed one in between, and this is, they say, is the perfect one. Get rid of both of those, and like, let's just make one of these things at this size. So let me just show you over here. If you look at Mac Rumors, you can see here, here's the, the front of it where they actually have basically the ports that you want on there. They got a couple USB-C or Thunderbolt ports and an SD card reader, right? That's the key. And then on the back of it, you can see there's four Thunderbolt, four ports basically, two USB-A ports, HDMI, headphone jack, everything we want. So just shrink that size down kind of halfway in between. We don't need both of those. That's what this guy's saying. For all it's worth, it's kind of a fun article, but what do you think? Do you think there's a reason to have both of those or should they do something like this? All right, so the next story is Google Chrome. So everyone uses Safari because they know it helps with power. It's, very, it's not power hungry. Well, Chrome's challenging them right now, right? Chrome's basically stating that they came out with their newest version, if you run it on a Mac. It's stating, let me just say this, it says it can run up to 18 hours of YouTube straight on this Chrome browser. 18 hours if you're on YouTube of before it runs out of battery. And they're testing it with, this is kind of the weird thing, it's the M2 MacBook Pro. So it's the MacBook Pro that's 13 and a half inches, or 13.6, but it's the old version. Remember the old, like it's got the touch bar? I'm not sure why they chose that. Maybe that had the biggest battery or something. But anyways, that's what they use to test it. So you guys test it out. Let me know if you can get 18 hours of playback using that, you know, using that uh, browser because I don't think you could even get that with Safari. And even if you can, it would be pretty incredible if you can. But I mean, at the end of the day, I still probably use Safari just because of all the features that kind of are compatible with Apple. But what do you use in the comments? Do you use Safari or do you use Chrome or either or? 
All right, so the next story is by a guy that I always mention and I always mess up his name. It's Ming Chai Koi or something like that. It doesn't really matter. But basically, he's saying the new possible iPhone SE is coming back. It's not coming back this year, though. He's saying in 2024. I don't know where he gets his information from, but he's saying it's going to be 6.1 inches. So quite a bit different up from the 4.9 inches. He said it's going to have an OLED screen as well, and it's going to come in around the $499 cost somewhere in there. This would be incredible. If you can get a 6.1 inch you know, iPhone, even if it's the SE, for that cost, not only that, he said it's basically going to remove the fingerprint reader, which kind of, you know, for people that like it, that kind of sucks. But at the end of the day, it's going to just have Face ID built in, into it as well. So let me know what you think. If that comes out, that's actually at a really incredible price point and for a 6.1 inch iPhone I think it'll do really well all right price alert again so this is gonna be in the Apple series 8 45 miller 45 millimeter watch let me just see my notes it's 359 on Amazon right now so it's quite a bit off it's at its lowest price point in the last couple months so 359 and then the version I think it's 41 millimeters is at 329 so you can get a, you know, I don't know what that is, 40 or 50 bucks off the normal cost right now. So they're actually coming in pretty good cost right now. You tell me though, are those worth it or not? But if you're thinking about getting the Apple Watch right now, go to that link. I'll have it in the description. You can pick one up. Again, if it cost changes, wait for that price to come back. Once they went there once, as it gets a little bit older, they're going to go back there again. So if you don't see the price now, just wait on it. All right, so these next two stories are going to be interesting, and they're going to keep you safe. So listen to this. I just want to make sure people are safe out there. This is the, you know, the AirPods Max cost about 500 bucks, right? Maybe even more than that. In New York City, the New York Police Department just put out kind of a, you know, bulletin or something where there's been about 30 different robberies of people running around on mopeds stealing those off people's heads. So if you're in New York City running around with five or six hundred dollar headphones on, listening to music and being in your own world, and someone swipes them from you on a moped. Let me just say, I warned you, right? So be, you know, you gotta look around. I wouldn't wear those things out in certain, you know, certain areas and stuff like that. You just, in a big city, there's too many people and, and they're gonna get swiped from you. So I just wanna let you know, the, what's the world we live in, it, it, it is not a good, you know, good thing to kind of, you know, this is not a good story. It doesn't make me feel good, but it keeps people safe. So just keep an eye out. They're swiping them there. They're gonna be swiping them in all the other cities very soon. All right, and this next story is even more concerning. So think about this, take a step back. So what, this is coming from the New York Times. They're saying that there's been kind of a new trend now where people will go, let's say you go into a bar or a crowded area and you're on your phone, right? And you have a four digit code. It's loud and everything, you can't see your face, so you're using your code. Well, people now are looking over people's shoulders and waiting till they can see the code, right? As soon as they see the code, you become a very important victim to them because now they can get that phone and they can unlock it. And when they can unlock it, they can resell it. They can use your, you know, your Apple payment card. They can go ahead and just reset it to go ahead and resell it, like I said later. They can basically turn off the do not foul, so you know they can't track your do not track on it. So as soon as they know your code, you become kind of, you know, someone that they're gonna actually foul around until they get that phone. So you got and they've been swiping it in crowded places and running, but they've also been waiting for people to leave and then getting them on the way out, sometimes, you know, holding them up or what have you. So keep in mind, for now on, if you're in a crowded area and you're using a code, always look around you to see who's watching you because now people have learned that it's actually a lot more lucrative to have the code than not to have the code, and people usually put them in right in front of people. They pick them up, and then that person becomes the victim. So be safe out there. It's not the funnest to report on, but it's interesting how these things kind of morph or trans, you know, transpire and uh, we all gotta stay safe. All right, and the last one I have here is not really a story, but one of my videos coming up soon is gonna be on this hub here, and that's all I'm gonna show you. It's really kind of a cool hub, and uh, it's not only a hub for an iMac, but it can be used for a lot of different reasons, and I'm gonna show you exactly why it can be used, so subscribe to my channel if you wanna see that. I, I, I guarantee you're gonna be a little bit, it's gonna be something you probably haven't seen before, and uh, you gotta subscribe in order to see it, right? So it'll come out in the next maybe two or three videos, maybe the next video, I'm not sure, so subscribe if you can. And we're gonna wrap this up up. So let me know if you guys like these kind of news stories. They help me out because you got to make a lot of content when you're a YouTube creator. And I like just to see what's in the news and I kind of report it back to people if they want to sit back and relax and just enjoy the news, right? This time I had some bad stories at the end. I apologize. I like to try to keep them happy and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's the world we live in, right? Um, subscribe to my channel if you can. I have over 500 videos now of Apple related stuff. I usually review products and hubs and everything else. So a lot more exciting stuff. And we'll talk to you in a few days. It might be about this hub. We'll talk to you then. Peace.